Welcome to the Nourishing Africa podcast. Today we are joined by Sheo Timi Kole Olu, the managing partner at Pave Stones Legal. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me here. Um, so before we start, please can you give us an introduction as to what you do and what Pave Stones Legal does? Okay, so I am at the managing partner of Pave Stones. Pave Stones is a modern law practice, full service practice, and we support companies in the various sectors of the economy, including the agri space. We're also very interested in technology and innovation, so we're keen to support companies in the startup space. And from your experience in the sector and in, in the legal world, what five tips or advice would you have for MSMEs and particularly agriculture and food SMEs in terms of scaling the business, starting up? What should they know from a legal perspective? Um, I think that's a very interesting question and pretty relevant for today's time, especially where we are in Nigeria. Obviously, we all know that Nigeria has, over the years, relied on oil for the sustenance of the economy, and that has proven to be flawed. I expect now, particularly given the global price wars and the pandemic, that there will be a key interest in other sectors, such as the agri space and manufacturing. It's um, therefore very important at this stage that businesses begin to pay attention to the, the legal requirements to be positioned to scale. So just to answer your question, here are the five legal requirements I think companies should pay attention to. Firstly, you need to have a suitable company structure. I'm pretty sure that a lot of companies in the agri space have set up as business names. But if they intend to, to attract investments in the form of venture capitals, angel investments, like um, AG Fonda and um, loans from the Bank of Agriculture or BOI or the rest, they would need to ensure that they have set up and properly and as a limited liability company. That will be my advice. This would ensure that they have their position for equity investments because they can get shareholder loans or investors come in, invest for equity in the business. The second point is having your contracts in place. A business that intends to scale must put their books in order. And this is contract wise. You should have contracts that properly regulate relationships in the business. This includes your shareholder agreements that will regulate the relationship between shareholders and the business. Founders agreement, if the, the um, business is set up by two or more people, the employee contracts, investors will be looking at things like having employee stock options in place, given that a lot of small businesses cannot pay for the level of expertise that they need to scale. So what a lot of companies should do is put employee stock options in place so that the key employees are given not just um, salary, which might not be much, but also given shares in the business. Apart from contracts that regulate the relationships with stakeholders, it's also possible as, a, as an SME founder that you also have put in funds in your business. And it's typical for people to forget to document the terms by which they have a founder is funding his own business. But it's key at a stage where you're thinking of scaling to have documents that clearly show the terms by which you have funded your business. This will allow you take your payment, your funds back. Perhaps if it's structured as a loan, you get repaid once you have enough funds in the business from investors. You get repaid and you get an interest. Or you can set it up as a convertible loan agreement which then gives you the right to convert the loan to equity in your business. I've been in situations where investors are asking owners of businesses to vest their shares again. By vesting, it means that 
saying that the shares are seen not to be owned by the owner until a certain period of time. And the argument some investors have made for why they have a right to request that owners um, begin invest the shares all over again is that most founders of businesses have put in only sweat equity and not cash. So if as a business owner, you have put in cash in your business, it's good to put, down, put that in clear contractual terms so that you can then justify why you have a right to shares and perhaps preferred shares in your own company. Another point to take account of is intellectual property rights. You need to protect your intellectual property because it's an asset that many take for granted. And this includes your trademark, your patent, your copyright. By trademark, your logo, your name, such as like Fam Crowdy, the trademark Fam Crowdy should be protected. Your patent, if you've come up with something that is new and invention, you should take steps to protect that as a patent. Now, when you have protected your intellectual property rights, this also can be considered to be an asset in your business, which can then improve the valuation of your business. As I said, given the example of Farm Crowdy, where they are right now, an investor who comes into Farm Crowdy would have to put, place a value on the name because the name is definitely popular and people, and they have built goodwill in that name. Any company who is expecting to build goodwill and expected to, expected to be taken seriously should protect their intellectual property rights. The fourth point I have is due diligence. Be due diligence ready. A business that intends to scale should ensure that they are ready for due diligence to be conducted. Investors would like to um, see that a business has complied with relevant tax requirements of them, regulatory requirements. To, and they want to ensure that the books are in order. Company, um, CAC documents, all the registrations have been properly done. If there's a change in shareholder, that should have been um, updated at the CAC. So I would advise businesses to check their, um, check their books and make sure that they have crossed their T's and dotted their I's in this respect. In the agri sector, there are various incentives like um, capital allowance that people can take advantage of in showing that the reason why you haven't paid tax to this extent, you can obviously show that it's because you had the right to certain incentives. Regulatory requirements like NAVDAC, that's the National Agency of Food and Drug Administration and Control. If they're utilizing foreign technology, they should have gotten the approval of the National Office for Technology Acquisition and Promotion, NOTAB, and many other regulatory requirements. Um, it would be good to obviously get good counsel, get a good lawyer to check your books and ensure that you're ready to be, um, your due diligence ready. And then the fifth point is having a good corporate governance culture in place. Investors, particularly foreign investors, are very impressed by companies that have set up good corporate governance practices. This shows that the business is run with integrity. There's the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance 2019, which states, clearly states how businesses should be run in Nigeria to, as evidence of good corporate governance practices. And um, so things like how the board, the board is um, composed, how um, ex the mixed number of executive directors to non-executive directors to ensure the business is objectively run should be considered. There has to be a clear framework for risk management and um, a good ethical culture to avoid insider trading. So these are things that need to be in place. Um, so those are my five points. If you put this in place, you're positioning yourself for investors who are looking for a good company to invest in all over the world, global investors. Thank you for that. And with the information that you've given us, even if you're not in Nigeria, these things are important and um, crucial for your business, regardless of where you're Just to end off, 
from a legal point of view, what is the one thing that you see most often that entrepreneurs um, fall victim of or are not aware of when starting or scaling their businesses? I think um, a lot of entrepreneurs are not careful to document terms of investment in their business. And that's why I took time to talk about how if you've invested in your business, you need to clearly document that. They also sometimes have not protected their IP right or sometimes do not even recognize that they have a right to protect something new that they have come up with. And issues of tax also. I've had startups who have been close to getting investments in and then have had to halt the deal or the deal has been slowed down because they found that they were not paying the tax as they should. Relevant withholding taxes, they were not withholding or they, they had not been diligently paying taxes. Some of these things were, are fine at the point where it's just you or you and your friend running your business. But when you intend to scale and move to the next level, obviously there will be an eye on you and you need to make sure you have complied with tax requirements, you have protected your IP rights, and you have documented the terms of investments because at the point where you're negotiating these deals, if you haven't done that, it could be a doubt, it could be an issue at that stage. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And where can entrepreneurs find you? Can you give us your uh, details? Okay, so you can, if you need more information, you can send me an email to shown, S-E-U-N dot Timmy Koleolu, T-I-M-I-K-O-L-E-O-L-U at pavestoneslegal.com. We are also, you can, you can check out our website, pavestoneslegal.com, www.pavestoneslegal.com. We're also on all the social media platforms as Pavestones Legal. And you can send us direct messages. We will be happy to receive them and respond to them as soon as we can. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. And we really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you so much for, for this. Thank you for listening to the Nourishing Africa podcast.